Welcome to episode 38 of Cyclops is Waiting for Me, an X-Men the Animated Series weekly recap podcast. I'm JC and Rod is fucking up our, con- yeah. our recording device. <laughs> We, we have, well, this is a little spoiler. We have a guest today, so I'm, like we're using some equipment we only use for guests. I'm like keeping an eagle eye on this screen or whatever. Anyway, I'm Rod. Outside this podcast, I do music stuff. You can just look up Rod Kim on the internet. Today we have our guest Sean De Pasquale. Sean, tell us about yourself. I also co-host a podcast where we rewatch a TV show from the '90s. Nice. It is The Nanny, starring Fran Drescher. There's really I was trying to find like some link or connection between this and that, and there really isn't one. But you know, I also love the X Men and. And when I'm not watching The Nanny, I've worked in comics for over two decades as a writer and an editor and a letterer and grew up reading comics. So I'm very excited to talk about I was going to say, so you do, have, nice. you do have some experience with comics. Yeah, I yeah. have like serious comic cred. I just do The Nanny thing on the side and that's what I'm promoting right now. But if you want to read my comics, just you can find find my name. And if you Google that in comics, a bunch of stuff comes up and it's in, and I'd love for anyone to read it. Cool. Any but, of them star Fran Drescher? Not yet. <laughs> well, now we know what we're going for. <laughs> yeah, no, but you know, like I definitely did a team book where it was like about this, you know, this these four girls in space doing cool stuff. But I and I did it because I always wanted to write a, a team book because yeah. I loved the X Men growing up and I never tried doing like let me put a group together and work on the like group dynamic stuff and all of that. So yeah, and probably every like cool male lead I ever wrote was like partially inspired by Wolverine. Not the, by Cyclops? No. The For gr- shame. The grumbly like I, know, I guess I gotta do what I gotta do. But then he's got a heart of gold. No, does, psych- does he though? I've got I got a whole problem with you guys as Cyclops love because what what love? What love Literally, like, the whole the whole series is mocking Cyclops. I mean, yeah, but uh, what I'm saying is like you can't be like pushing Cyclops into any kind of realm of like heroic lead. He sucks. No, that's kind of the the joke of the, no. the podcast name is because because it's what, he sucks. It's, well, what Gene? What is the line? Cyclops is waiting for me. It's oh. Wolverine. He had just been injured by Sabretooth in in one of the first season episodes and he's recovering and they have like this awkward moment where they're about to kiss and gene is like i should go cyclops is waiting for me and then wolverine like dejectedly is like so am i <laughs> and the, we didn't even realize when we picked the name that scene gets so many flashbacks throughout the series <laughs> so like <laughs> so as funny. we're watching the episodes we literally like that's the name of our show yeah. that's great yeah that worked out yeah it's like i that. was wondering where the name came from yeah it's yeah. it's it's a moment that it's just like Cyclops sucks, even remember. though they don't directly say he also, sucks. <laughs> that specific episode has all of the X Men memes. Yeah, <laughs> like it's the one with like with the, the in the, the bed, picture, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. And yep. everything. Also, yeah. the one where Cyclops and Jean are making out in the background, and the Wolverine is just like dejected in the foreground. That's also <laughs> that's that all same in that epi- same episode. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's literally crazy. the meme episode. Yeah. It's so funny. I think the only memes outside that episode are from like the Christmas episode. Sure. Right. That's it. And the juggernaut bitch. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. No. <laughs> anyway, Cyclops is Waiting for Me is our weekly podcast series where we're going back and watching every single episode of the original 1992 X Men the Animated Series in the original intended script order, building up to the release of X Men 97 coming to Disney Plus in 2023. For those of you who are wondering how we determine the order of the episodes, we utilize the listed order previously on X Men, the making of an animated series by the lead showrunner Eric Leewald, which is also available for reference on Wikipedia. And now Disney Plus, they corrected their. Their order. Speaking of, Disney Plus has adjusted their episodes to be in that order. As of this recording, because of how streaming goes, we don't know if they'll just randomly decide to screw it up again because fun. Yeah, well, it's 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 in the proper order on Disney Plus. I do not know if when they're going to fix it on Amazon and yeah. such. But quick reminders: we're a recap show about a series that came out 26 years ago. There are going to be spoilers, and if you don't want it spoiled for you, pause the podcast, watch the episode, come back, and we're going to do our best to avoid mentioning anything about future episodes we haven't covered yet. Comics and such, totally fair game though. And if not surprised by the amount of shade we throw at Disney <laughs> constantly, we are not affiliated with or sponsored by them in any way, shape, or form. Don't forget to follow us on social media. Cyclops IWFM pod on Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, and Facebook. Make sure, of course, to follow us on your favorite podcast services. Finally, we record these episodes in batches right now, hence I'm on my second cup of coffee. And if we're reacting to any news about the upcoming series, we may be a few we will be a few weeks behind. Yeah, <laughs> we're guarantee. we're not reacting to news today. <laughs> on to the show. So today we're gonna be talking about season four, episode two, titled A Deal with the Devil. It aired on September 14th, 1996, currently sits at a 7.3 star rating on IMDb, and Sean when you and I were figuring out what episode you were going to guest on, you specifically said, I want an Omega Red episode. 
So. Yeah. So I wanted an Omega Red episode because I was a big action figure guy as a kid, mm -hmm. and I loved the Omega Red figure and didn't realize at first what it like i had never seen him in comics somehow i missed uh -huh. that arc even though i was like avidly reading comics at that time but well, he then, was only in like six uh, just a couple six x-men books from the jim lee run yes yeah. and i missed him and like but then i bought i got the figure before i saw him on the show and then started to get the character on the show and was just like these are my favorite episodes like i love this guy he was a great figure i do remember it's that. an awesome it came with like he had the tentacles kind of like came yeah. out of his palms and you could like whip him around yeah the little switches on like on his, mm -hmm. on his you could suck him back in you yep. pull him in or push him out yeah, yeah. it was cool it was and really cool rod is also familiar with a lot of characters because of the action figures before the show too yeah yeah no. yeah shatter star i think is another uh, cool figure. Yeah. yeah that's what that's him right the mojo guy shatter star long, or is shot? That? No, long, long shot, shot. Yes. sorry long, long shot, shot that's a figure that like i I, and 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 Trevor Fitzroy. Yep. Yeah. yeah. That's another one that I had that figure and had no idea who that was until they I saw have, pop up on the. They have not cartoon. used that character in the comics in years. years. Yeah. Trevor we, Fitzroy. We were just talking about Raza too. Raza. He's just yep. kind of like an amalgamation. I would not have of recognized random sci-fi parts. Yep. Yeah. I just would not have recognized him without the figure. <laughs> also, before we get into the specific episode from the Star Jammers, did you know that? the name of the big lizard character is Chode and not Chod. Chode? Yes. Are you sure? That's what they say in the show. <laughs> Chode. It, like, I always read it as Chod because I'm like, there's no way his name is actually Chode. That is the canon way Listen, they pronounce it. Those guys were having a good time. Yeah. Right. Yeah. They were having fun. They were making comics and having fun. And they're like, right. oh, call him Chode. It'll be hilarious. By having fun, we mean getting high. I see that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, but, yeah. Kicking into the episode, this, because of the order that it aired, actually has the new remix version of the song. Yeah, the weird. And the, the intro that is more of, like, your highlights of episodes rather than just doing the character card moments of it. I will give them this. It is, like, more, like, intense. It is. So they, they probably were going for the extreme 90s. I was dis I, dis I made a disappointed, oh yeah, when, when it popped up last weird. night. Oh, so you don't know this. I talked to Ron Wasserman, who did the original X-Men theme song. Yeah. And I was like, what is with this new version? And he hadn't heard it. So we were at a bar. He was listening to it on my phone. And he was like, I don't know where this came from. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so they re-recorded it. So it, it was some Fox executive was like, we got to make it more extreme, it baby. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, why? It's perfect. They never wow. did that with the 90s Spider-Man theme. I think they kept that one the whole way. I think they did. The, that was the, the edge, right? The, yes. Yeah, from U2. Was it? No, yeah. Flea. No. No. No, it was The Edge. The Edge. Yeah, from U2. He, he wrote that, the Spider-Man. Spider yeah. That was The Edge. edge right? yeah. yeah. I knew, wow. it was, I knew it was one of those. Someone, one of those guys. Somebody. I don't think Flea writes Brandy anything at this point. So. <laughs> yeah, The Edge. No. That's right. So, okay. episode kicks off. We are at the Caucasus Mountains. That's why they did the Spider-Man musical. Holy that shit. That guy oh, loves... I didn't, I didn't even think about that. Right? No, I did that not. That guy, was. they were like, hey, do you want to do a Spider-Man musical? And he was like, oh, 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 please. <laughs> Little did he know. Oh. <laughs> please, please, please. I wrote the theme song and I loved it so much. Maybe that guy just of Spider-Man. Yeah, and then Probably. it was a disaster. And you, and you know that the producers and Turn Off the Dark. That yep. yep, Turn yeah. Off the Dark. Julie. Watching Pink's current tour and be like, fuck. Yeah. She's doing all the stuff that we they were, tried to do. We were so they close. <laughs> Like, like all the harness work. Yep. She's right. flying over the audience while singing yep. and stuff. And so we're like, hmm, okay, so it can be done. Yeah, but she's and, not dressed as the black cat as she does it. And she hasn't, no one's gotten injured yet. I mean, her her outfit is close to the black cat. Yeah. It's, it's like, she's in the spandex while flying. Yeah, nobody's gotten injured so far. Exactly. That's why the producers are like, she This will age well if somebody yeah. gets injured like oh, next no. week. <laughs> oh, knock on wood. Everyone be careful. Yeah. So, Caucasus Mountains, Caucasus Mountains, I don't know what those are, but it's yeah. apparently in the former Soviet Union. And we see a bunch of tents on a cliffside, and a, a bunch of soldiers are digging in the snow, and then we see a tentacle. The only thing that stood out to me from that is that's a very weird spot to bury somebody is in a cliffside, because that didn't look like a big, safe cliff to bury somebody in. No, and it did also, not. I don't give a lot of credit to Dark Star from the Winter Guard of choosing that to be the spot to bury yeah. Omega Red after Storm froze him in the last episode. Yeah, it's like I would like launch them into like another planet or something. Or a <laughs> freezer. Yeah. <laughs> or an yeah. abyss. Like weight him down and throw him to the bottom of the ocean in like a cryo Which chamber. Which feels like or, something that you know, Russia would have done, right? Yeah. yeah. Also, it's really cold down there. So we don't know. Maybe that's cold enough I mean, yeah. to slow him down. You know, they make a lot of weird decisions about the people that are, you know, apocalyptic in this, yeah. this series. Though. Right. We can end the world, but we'll just put you in this corner and wait, wait yeah. it out. No. Yeah. So the soldier calls for the colonel. We realize these are not Russian soldiers. These are definitely Americans. And you reveal that it is Omega Red. And they, they 
you know, say, well, the living weapon has a job to do. And yeah. we jump back over to an American facility and they're kind of just giving Omega Red a little bit of a recap of what's been going yeah. on. And he's still very much in like, there is a war between our countries right now. And he doesn't want to accept that the war is over, essentially. Yeah. So the Colonel says something like, the war's over, <laughs> we won. I mean, lost, turns but. out Omega Red's right. Because <laughs> it never it was, really ended and it, they're back. It was just quieter. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> he's right. Yeah. It's still yeah. going. <laughs> yep. But they're essentially like, yeah, we got a deal for you and we're going to make you human again. And he's like, well, why would you do that? And it's like, well, we need you to go into the waters off of Hawaii, just outside of Pearl Harbor. We have a nuclear submarine that has a reactor core that's unsafe. And it's like... And it's on a ledge. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, the ledge of a reef. And it's like, that's a shitty spot for somebody to leave a sub. <laughs> Thematically, though, it's interesting because they, they really start, even from this very first scene, they start hitting, like, the the big, like, thematic concept, which is, like, does Omega Red see himself as just a weapon, or is there humanity in him? And that's, like, I mean, not to jump ahead, but that's, like, sort of what Storm is saying later on, where, you know, she's like, I... But what? Like, yeah. no, you're a person. You're not a yeah. weapon. Like, weapons don't have feelings, so you can't feel something. Otherwise, that means you are a person. And that, and this is this scene right away establishes that you know pretty subtly too. Like, it's just I mean, it works within within context. So it's good writing. Yeah, and I, I did appreciate because we don't really know what Omega Red feels about himself. Like, does he feel like he is the living weapon? Right. Because that's, that's... Or does he want to be human again? Right. Or, you know, does he feel abused by his government? Or is he so far gone that he's a, 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 literally just like a weapon, a, a, yeah. an emotionless robot? It's a lot of what we've also seen from Wolverine over the years mm -hmm. in the comics because he tries to be human, but a lot of times doesn't... He, he has to revert to being the weapon yes. to, to save the day. Yes, and that's why they're so good. It... It is a little like, yeah, that's also what Sabretooth does, you know, yeah. where you're like, yeah, sure, it's a great relationship that was already clearly established between him and Sabretooth. We're just kind of treading the same ground again. But but yes, but it Russia. Is, but Russia. Yeah. yeah. And cooler powers. Yeah. yeah. And cooler powers. Mm -hmm. To their credit, the, the military is like, well, you know, we don't trust you. So at least they're honest about that aspect. But I also don't think that Omega Red trusts them that they could actually reverse whatever has been done to him either. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. So their solution, the military, is we're going to put a vial of liquid nitrogen into you. And at first I was like, that's a dumb thing. They suicide squad him. No, yeah. Yeah, they, no. but, but the liquid nitrogen makes the most sense because of anybody, we've seen cold. And deep cold is what yeah. affects yes. Omega Red the most. So it's like, okay, nanites weren't a you know common trope that we would always talk about like we do today back in the 90s. So it's like, okay, liquid nitrogen seems viable. Yeah. Sure. Point. And it's like... Terminator probably is somewhere coming out around this yeah. time, isn't it? Terminator 2? That was what, 94? Yeah. Yeah, so this was, yeah, that was So, Apple yeah, so that was, so oh, the yeah. Terminator 2 was liquid nitrogen, so yeah. everyone was like, oh, yeah, they use liquid nitrogen <laughs> and freeze it. Yeah, because in the Bishop episodes, Wolverine calls him the Terminator, yeah. I think. Mm -hmm, as, mm -hmm, yep. Mm -hmm. yep. So, oh. yeah, so Omega Literally. Red wants some assurances, <laughs> too, so he, he needs two shipmates, and he chooses Wolverine and Storm. Yeah. <laughs> completely arbitrarily <laughs> yeah doesn't even tell them why it's, nope it's like no yeah. this is a hostage situation right now guys not because they're providing any value to the mission i mean wolverine you sort of can and i guess storm because she froze him right that's why so he's like yeah. vengeful but, yeah yeah but, it, but it's, it's not it's so not, random it's not assurance to complete the mission it is literally just these are hostages Lateral, yeah and we find out there's like a little bit more subtext for storm other than just that she froze him but we'll get into that as they right. move along mm -hmm. yep. it feels all very calculated he thought this through so oh, yeah. We yeah. jump to the mansion and Wolverine finds out what's going yeah. on. And he's just straight up pissed. Like, there's no other way. He yeah, but I, I love this because he's really not. And it's like, uh, my note on this was, I love that Wolverine's bitching to bitch, but he's secretly so thrilled to go do something. Like, yeah. he loves this because as soon as they get to the end of the scene, he's like, yeah, let's go. I'm ready. Yeah. So he doesn't really care. He just wants to complain. Yeah. He's an old curmudgeon. I did appreciate the dig he gave, though. He's like, what is it? This isn't Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, he's right about, but but it's also like Wolverine knows exactly what they're doing. You know, they're doing what they normally. Yeah. They didn't want to come ask Wolverine to do this clearly, so they dug up another Wolverine to do it for them. Right. Yeah. And the and the excuse for, would be from the government is like, well, he knows the long lost codes that are associated sure. to the show, which. 
I'm sorry, somebody else knows those yeah. codes. Well, also, he was actually invincible to the radiation, too. I think of course. Right. Point. But the point being is, like, he Wolverine is well aware this is what the U.S. government does. They make yeah. and find weapons to use to do stuff that they want to do, yeah. you know? And so this is what that is. Well, you were saying, like, Xavier was like, well, maybe I should go. And Wolverine's like, well, no. Yeah, so yeah like, immediately. Like, no, 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 no. no. Yeah. Please, please, please. I've he, already sharpened he, my claws. He's that one co-worker <laughs> well, that yeah. complains. Just yeah. Complain. yeah, no, I just like Wolverine as the co-worker that's like he complains about everything and then when someone's like well i can do it he's like you won't do it right anyway i'll do it yep. you know <laughs> yeah. i'll just do it myself i'll yeah. get it right the first time exactly um, meanwhile storm's like i didn't agree to anything <laughs> no. i don't know why i'm here <laughs> why is this guy just yelling over me right now <laughs> but wolverine also does point out he does not believe that the nitrogen is going to work and yep. he's, he basically says like omega red eats this stuff for breakfast yeah so you get that that you know checkoff's gun it's like yeah. cool we know that this is going to fuck up. It's just how how is it going to fuck up, essentially? Yeah. yeah. So jump over to the base. Everybody's getting ready by the subs. Omega Red is just riling Wolverine <laughs> up, and he's loving every second of it because he knows Wolverine isn't going to go at him in front of the military. Yeah. It's This is, like, kind of a classic bottle episode, too, you know, where it's, like, it's really just, like, couple of x-men are like the main characters and omega red and i love when shows get into their later seasons and they're just like i don't know put like omega red and storm and wolverine in the submarine that'll be fun and you kind of and it is it's fun to see like oh how would these characters deal with and because like why is storm there it's so weird yeah. it's not even like a great atmosphere for her powers really to work in because like she's very limited by like just the atmosphere i guess around them yeah. like i don't really yeah a hundred percent i like did go to the Wikipedia page for Storm and try to understand, like, could her powers even work in a submarine? Yes, we've talked about that, too, about them in space and stuff. Like, is she tied to, like, Earth? Or, like, was she, like, yeah. She's not yeah. fully tied to Earth no. because she helped terraform Mars right. and the Krakoa stuff. Yeah, but also we, we had that episode, Dark Phoenix, where they were, like, in, like, on the moon and she was still able to use her power. Like, so... Yeah, it's like this is like goes. It's tied levels, to so. atmosphere. Is. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Marvel.com's, like, official Storm entry gets into she's labeled as omega, omega yeah. and and it gets into like she's got a it's a molecular level thing that she's able to like manipulate molecules and turn she so she can like make wind yeah. she can make lightning right so that was hence the when she shocks him later yeah. you're like okay she made static yeah. electricity sure. fair so i was gonna save it to later in the episode but i think you referencing that it is a bottleneck is really interesting bottle this, episode sorry bottle yeah, yeah, episode. Yeah. this is actually what eric leewald calls the two-day wonder this was originally not what the script was there was a script that was called bring me charles xavier or the alternate title was bring me the head of charles xavier and the the entire episode was killed by Joe Calamari over at Marvel. He'd written like over 10,000 words on it and they had to come up with something because they had to send it off for animation. So he did this in like a coffee fueled weekend and wrote <laughs> this entire script in, in two days. Oh, nice. So it is like one of those things where it ended up being one of the things that Eric Lee doesn't like about the series sometimes when it's more about the plot than about the people in the plot. Yeah. So to your point, it's like it is a very different vibe than a lot of the other episodes. Yeah, well, and 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 it's a lot of dialogue. Yeah. There's a lot of like people talking and that fills up time and takes up space and then it's cheaper to produce it because then you only have three actors to pay instead of your yeah. normal whatever the team is like 12 actors right. plus your villains this is like hey get the four of them and like professor he'll do a line <laughs> this this batch that we're recording today is kind of like that like we had just done one which is basically like storm cyclops and, and corsair. corsair yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. yep so all that said we see wolverine getting riled up by omega red he can't do anything about it storm is holding him back and then we get the drop in about her claustrophobia being you yeah. know something to, she, like, to reference into the sub and there's like that weird distortion yeah they actually give a distortion vibe for it <laughs> and and like the whole time because they get in the sub right? they get in the sub yeah. and then and then the whole time they're in there Omega Red is just like taunting Wolverine yeah. and yeah. like antagonizing He's him. He's doing a great job of it too. And like I had this vivid moment where I was like, man, as a kid, this felt like Game of Thrones yeah, to right. me. This show felt like the, the the stakes couldn't be higher. And I watch it as an adult and I'm like, it's WWE. It's wrestling. <laughs> yeah. It's not it's not anywhere close to the drama that, like that I or intrigue or like well written dialogue I thought it was as a kid. But it's still enjoyable. It's just more like wrestling. It's just like, oh I'm gonna get yeah. you, oh, I'm gonna get you worse. And I think this you know, is one of the, it, the like early moments we figure out like part of Storm being there is that she's also like kind of the the 
collateral for Wolverine. Yeah. So the Omega Red's like, even if you get pissed enough at me, where are you going to be angry enough to sacrifice her? Yeah. For this whole situation. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Because like, because <laughs> if he goes one on one with Wolverine, he thinks Wolverine will go off the deep end and be down to kill them both. Yeah. But he knows if you go too far. You're taking your friend out, yeah, and you won't do that. Because they're in a submarine, a very yeah. small submarine, yeah. a mini sub. They even reference it. It sucks they make her the damsel in distress in this. You know, like that. It's like, oh, oh, yeah. oh dear, help me, Wolverine. I didn't and it's think like, about that, yeah. it, it does suck a little bit. It's like it almost would have been cooler if Wolverine's the one that needs the rescuing mm-hmm. in the in the in that point of the episode where he like wraps her. You know, where like Omega would, like wraps her up, and he's like literally just carrying her around like a suitcase. Yeah. Right. And you're like, oh boy, like it would have been almost cooler if Wolverine ends up in that situation yeah. and well, and she has to almost sacrifice herself to you know in yeah. some way to, to save him right. would have been pretty dope a little foreshadowing yeah right. yeah <laughs> true. true 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 yeah so they actually get on the mini sub the reveal yeah. of why the military is is trusting omega red and omega is like straight up well they don't trust me one but two also i'm going to do it because i want my humanity back and i think to your point earlier it's like does he actually want his humanity back? Right. Also, and, I think Mickey Rourke should play. I know he was not great in Iron Man Two, but I want I want Mickey Rourke from Iron Man Two played Whiplash to play Omega Red in the MCU. I wonder how like drained his face will be at that point. I mean, like yeah, a better character. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, like imagine like a really old Omega Red who's dug up now, mm. and it's just like, oh, I'm just like basically what he played as Whiplash. Yeah, as, yeah basically Mickey Rourke. Yeah. yeah, Mickey Rourke. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> to anyway, be fair, I'm saying, I said yeah. what I said. Yeah, he would be a good carry on from Spider Man too. <laughs> sure. Yeah. yeah. It's uh, the multiverse thing. They're like, oh, yeah. like, in this universe, you're actually Omega Red. <laughs> well, whatever. Uh, or in the MCU, he yeah. discovers he has a mutation. I'm yeah, flexible. That's what I mean. They're like, we have a multiverse. No, anything's possible. No. No. Like recast Fair. you. Wolverine does something that I thought was really weird, where he actually argues against the humanity coming back. Yeah, and it's like I feel like if that is actually the reason why Omega Red is accepting the deal, maybe don't tell him that it can't work <laughs> yeah. because yeah. then you take away any leverage that you guys actually had at that point. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It also makes a Chernobyl reference where he's like, you know, make sure to take the sub down easy because if they build subs like they do reactors, we're in trouble. Yeah. And it's like, Ooh. as a kid, I'm like, I had no idea what Chernobyl was. No. Yeah. Oh, no. Cause... Or the tra- or that, that like, maybe that's not like the best joke to be making. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah, yeah. To be, to be fair, like, at the time they were making some digs on oh, russia yeah, of like course. the like they were literally calling like ruskies in like previous episodes yeah. they didn't care about offending <laughs> we were, russia we were, no. like researching is this still a slur yeah like, is right? this a slur <laughs> like, yeah. is now appeared in rod search history <laughs> that's funny so they have a rough landing on the ship they we hear the canadian surrey instead of a full-fledged sorry <laughs> and talk shit about the quality of the control of the ship too yeah that was mm-hmm. yeah and they drop on their helmets and they they go into the ship oh yeah and if we haven't talked about it yet or mentioned it yet up until this point omega red's been in like hannibal lecter like bond oh yeah like, like yeah. Yep. everything's covered he's tethered down so they like let him go at this moment so yeah they it like, they, it like explodes off him yeah. like it's he like looks everything like doomsday off. when superman first meets him and yes. he's all like wrapped up rod does not get that reference you hate <laughs> superman no rod doesn't read any old comics so oh, the, the you visuals. just are an x-men animated series fan Pre- I, i'm just i'm a casual fan. like even for this show i have a memory of a goldfish oh like, okay so, <laughs> <laughs> with That's comic right. books, even even, the even ones I do even read, so. I don't remember like thirty minutes later. <laughs> yep. Well, I'll just take my word for it. Yeah, no, I know Doomsday though, so I could see the, I could visualize the the whole ghetto. Yeah. So Omega Red hops over to the controls, boots up the ship, and then Wolverine makes a Duracell reference. Yes. Or sorry, Energizer. 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 Yeah. Yep. The, the, oh. just like that damn bunny. Yep. Oh, it would have been great if he called it that damn bunny or <laughs> whatever. Yeah. Now I want that to be like in my head canon what he actually said. They engage the the props on it and then the sub kind of like starts to drift down into the reef. No, it's uh, even better. He says he says they should use this in one of those ads with the battery rabbit. Yep. Which is <laughs> battery, the rabbit. battery rabbit. Battery rabbit. rabbit. The battery rabbit. <laughs> that for the most part that is the only like fun fact that appeared on any of the websites we use for reference of like the trivia of the episodes exactly. is it's literally the energizer rabbit is the only reference in well, the episode no interestingly enough i bet you that was a s p thing or like a legal thing because they probably couldn't clear him saying energizer bunny oh, so it became battery rabbit yep. they didn't even want him they were like he can't even say the word bunny so, and they're like okay rabbit like, funny like mini trivia i forget what company it is but outside the u.s 
one of Energizer's competitors oh. actually has the bunny as their mascot. Interesting. And it's a long ongoing like, feud. Like, yeah, trademark feud or whatever. So that's awesome. That's another podcast. But if you want to Google it for some entertainment, the, the whole thing about Energizer Bunny is like a uniquely like international American that's like, so cool. <laughs> rivalry. That's so, another you said that's another podcast. And in my head I was like, Does yours? this guy host a battery podcast? Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> I am fascinated. I want to know what they no wonder he doesn't know about comics. He's hosting the history of battery He's podcast. He's really fucking into batteries. He's so cool. Cool. Rod, so this? that's going to be your responsibility to find that to throw it on the Instagram when okay. this episode goes live. Okay. Yeah, cool. So the it starts to to dip into the reef and they end up recovering, and that's where we get to see that Omega Red is is going to show his cards, and he kind of balls up really quickly as soon as he knows that the sub is working. He doesn't call him Colonel; he calls him Coronel. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Because I mean that one makes sense because it's the the Russian version yeah. of it and stuff. But sure. it's like, but I just distinctly remember. You know how there's a thing you will pronounce words wrong if you read it first <laughs> as opposed to heard it, yes. and that was me as a kid. I didn't know Colonel and Conell were Connell. different. Yeah, yeah, I was like, I said it once, and somebody looked at me like really weird in like third grade, and then I quickly learned the right pronunciation for it. Yeah, that's me in basically every California city. Yeah. <laughs> the Colonel. Kohanga. The, the Colonel is essentially like. Look, dude, we're gonna we're gonna blow your brains out. You already got the ship working. Yeah. And Omega Red just drops the tentacle into the back of his neck and just pulls it oh, right yeah. out. Yeah. And it's like, oh, you guys didn't plan this out very well, did you? Yeah. He's, he's like, this was from like a air rifle or something. Yeah. <laughs> I that was a little disappointing that it was just so simple that he just pulled it out. Like, cause they have even. The, the writers had even given themselves when earlier Wolverine's like, oh, it's not even going to do anything. He eats that shit for breakfast or whatever yep. he says. So it's like all they had to do was have them be like, all right, we're calling your bluff, Omega Red. And Beep, press, and it, press it. And it pops and everyone's like, oh, and then he's like, oh, you idiots. Yeah. Like they had it. And so to like undercut any tension with just like, yeah. And then he throws it on the floor. You're well, like, and then Wolverine even goes like, I told you. Yeah. <laughs> well, they, funny enough, they went back to that in a recent, I want to say it's X-Force, yeah. where where he, he literally has an implant that they're going to detonate. And then when he finds out from it, I think it's from Mikhail. Okay. That he's like, oh, yeah, I just pull it out and I don't tell them that I pulled it out kind of scenario. <laughs> also. So people love putting implants in this man. <laughs> I guess like I, I like Mandela effect myself into forgetting what Professor X sounded like on this. But how did we all go from like this version of Professor X and his voiceover character to like it has to be Patrick Stewart? I think Patrick Stewart just like fit the look so much that we just started in like, and we all just wanted him to have the, that. Because then in my head I was like, oh, this guy's gonna have a British accent. And when he first opens his <laughs> mouth, when I watch this episode, and he's you know, and it's I start to rewatch, super dry white guy, and now. he's like, all right, you guys, we've got to go get him. Yeah. I'm like, what is this? How did we all just go like, no, he should be British. He was always meant to be British. Yeah, it's what. Stanley intended. Yep. <laughs> Stan always wanted him to be British. And then even when we go to first class, it's younger British. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Um, even though he's in like upstate New York. Yeah. It's fine. <laughs> so obviously Wolverine, like you said, is like, yep. fucking told you guys. And he's ready to go. But Storm holds him back. And this mm -hmm. is where we get into what we we're chatting about earlier. It's like, oh, yeah, you might be able to survive this. But if he tears our suits, I'm going to die. Yeah. yeah. Um, I control it air molecules but not radiation molecules yeah right <laughs> and then wolverine says fuck it and goes for it anyway yeah, almost instantly yeah it's like sorry storm yeah well i mean he did say on an earlier episode and i quote i go where i want to go wolverine does the attack and he quickly gets tossed back by omega red and then storm is able to like we said use the molecule mm -hmm. only one thing i just want to point out this was a sunken sub Mm -hmm. There were no bodies on this. There should have been a dead body on that sub somewhere. Yeah. Didn't Omega Red clean it up beforehand? Did so maybe the US government cleaned it up beforehand. <laughs> You know, like maybe they went in there, got it all like ready to go. Because like, yeah. like if it was sunk, how could it even be floating right now or yeah. doing anything that it's doing? So someone obviously yeah. had to repair it yeah. and make somebody it just like you know, bailed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fair. I I do appreciate how strong. Like so, Wolverine is hurting from the radiation because he popped his own suit essentially yes, yeah, with yeah, his claws. And Storm like drags him to a ladder. The dude is a brick shit house. Like yeah. we've talked about this. He would he, be fine. Well. 
he his healing factor is nowhere near as good in this show as it is in the comics. Like you go back to the early Sabretooth episode, yeah, and he gets slashed across the stomach by Sabretooth, and he's recovering like two days later. <laughs> yeah. Like the actual scene. Well, where I mean, then he's killable in this. Yeah, <laughs> well, I guess also like he's actively being poisoned while it's happening. So sure, but quite... it would. I wouldn't it be co- just constantly yeah. fighting. I mean, he'd be weaker, but like yeah. I don't yeah. know that he'd be in any real danger yeah. of dying. But I, I'm just so, impressed that but, Storm yeah. is able to drag him to the ladder yeah. so easily. Like, well, I was I wrote that note and I was like, I don't understand. Is this Wolverine not weigh anything? Yes, because yeah. it seems like that would be really, really, he, really he hard. Weighs whatever a muscular man weighs plus a metal Edmantium. skeleton. Yeah, skeleton. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's he's like five Unless, foot two mm, and just brick shit. I don't house. know. Maybe they've established that Edmantium ha- is like super super hard and durable but doesn't weigh as much i don't know i think we've seen numbers where he's estimated to be like 285 to 300 <laughs> so props to storm because yeah. she like puts him on her shoulder she's a beast yeah she's yeah. a beast that's why it's even more unbelievable that that omega red was mishandling right. her right. manhandling her all over the boat <laughs> but as they get to the ladder omega red stops him and he reveals a full plan that he's going to target 15 largest cities in the world with the missiles and he just wants to watch the world burn. <laughs> he said he's going to target and i I wanted you to stop there. He just, reveals he's going to Target, yeah. and they're like, no, not Target. Target. You're the gonna savings. Leave. You're going to leave with the TV. <laughs> yeah. I want to go to Target when I want to watch the world burn. So. He's, like, he's like, I hate capitalism. I want to destroy it all, starting with Target. I feel like growing up in the Northeast, Target wasn't like on our radar at that point. Like We, had, we, we barely had Walmarts. At How that old point. are you? Almost forty. Okay, yeah, no, Kmart is what we had growing yeah. up. They didn't Kmart, have Walmart Kmart, or Target. Bradley's and Caldor. Yeah. Yep. K- Kmart. It yeah. was Kmart, yeah. but was Kmart, Kmart is the same thing. Kmart yeah. became Walmart, became Target. I was say, if you want to watch the world burn, you you kind of live within like driving distance of the Burbank Walmart, so that's as close as the apocalypse. Too. I <laughs> I I live within driving distance of the other Walmart in the valley. That's even worse. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 yeah you have multiple ones. In yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Oh no, I've been to that one. That one's not even a Walmart building. No, it's not. It's like a converted something. It's else. a weird warehouse. <laughs> it's a former prison. Maybe actually still current prison. <laughs> <laughs> so we start to hear Beast and Rogue and Professor X, and he basically says like. It's a last resort, but we're going to have to engage. Everything I learned about nuclear warheads, I learned from Beast in this episode. Yeah, right. absolutely. It's my, um, the extent of all my knowledge and all it'll ever be. Yep. <laughs> and then we go to the Air Force, or sorry, the, Whatever military. the non-specific military base, yeah. where they're asking for support from the Air Force. And they're like, well, your agency didn't tell us shit, which is the most U.S. government thing ever yes. of like, oh, wait, two groups are not communicating well, and it's going to possibly result in the it's death the of U- millions. It's the U.S. government. Yeah. Like, they make it pretty clear it's the u.s they just are very very vague about like what alphabets <laughs> is involved you know right well we know that fbi is the business. we know it's either the navy or the air force that is the support group sure. that was not informed but right. we don't know department x what or whatever shadowy you fucking, yeah. organization yeah. seal team six omega red then kind of goes on like his like villain speech and he talks about well the greatest sadness for a weapon is that they were created and then not used and that's why he wants to blow up all these cities yeah to which which says so much that then we get to the core of the theme of of that of the, that whole question right yep. is we learn then the answer to how does omega red see himself and it is he is humanity is completely gone by his estimation and now not only have they wasted his humanity they've wasted his use as a weapon so yep. he feels he's he's having a midlife crisis yes. here because he's like if these precious weapons aren't used then they're wasted and that's him being like i've just been frozen in ice and i'm the perfect weapon and no one's using me like <laughs> it, that's why he can even justify working for the u.s government here even though the, the, you know they're he's like i hate you guys and they're like look the war's kind of over but anyway don't you your weapon yeah. and he's like i am please use me so just please so, pull my trigger it's and then, really sad it's yeah. really kind of like tragic and beautiful for a 90s kids cartoon right. you know and then storm has her quote of the show which rod i'm expecting you to have on hand Oh, no, I don't. Uh, so it's right after that Omega yeah, Red know, says it's the greatest sadness. Yeah, I know that the I'm essence so dis- of it. so disappointed in you. <laughs> I know the essence of it was it's just like you know, weapons have the like, weapons don't have feelings. There you go. You, you got it. That actual quote? Yeah. Because yeah. it it's like weapons don't have feelings. So she's just That Storm like, says that, right? Yeah. 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 Like, you're you're a person in there. Yeah. You had a daughter. And yeah. are, you, are you that tired of life? Yeah. Yes. Yep. <laughs> in great, great. Given what, what day you ask. 
Right. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, totally. it's it's I mean, it's tragic. It is really sad. And and it's and then I was like, oh, so this is kind of like they they were it's not just a dumb cartoon. Mm-hmm. They definitely were like lacing themes and stuff, like cool deep themes of like like existentialism like yeah. within this like Omega Red character. And that's pretty cool. Again, for like you go back and watch. I mean, I went back and tried to watch Super Friends. Oh, that and doesn't I, age anywhere near. Ooh, nothing. Yeah. There. We've yeah. got to go save the day. Yay, we've saved it. It's like Spider Man is amazing for us. Yeah, there's just nothing going on. Don't there. you dare talk shit about Firestar. They no, look. If you look <laughs> into, like they're, they're just like, let's go, guys. No, if you like, watch those cartoons close enough and look into their eyes, you can see that they're just like, please kill me. <laughs> <laughs> Let us out of here. We're empty inside. That's what I said about Mystique and the Dark Phoenix. Oh, yeah, fair. (laughs) (laughs) Let me get my favorite part. We're coming up to the the part where Beast sends her down, or she jumps out, right, Rogue? Not not quite yet. yet. Okay, that's my favorite. But to your point about him going through the midlife crisis. Yeah. Omega Red also is like, yeah, I was under ice for a quarter of a century. Like, if anybody's going to appreciate life the most, it's me. And it's like, oh, yeah, you had it taken away and now you're getting it back. It means more than the person who's never had shit taken away from them. Did you get the implication that he was like, I wasn't even asleep? Like, yeah, was, yeah, he was, I was aware. I was just like conscious for he, decades. Yeah, he's aware of how much. <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah. And, and, and he is, again, answering her question by being like, I am not human. I am a weapon, but also I'm mad that no one's using me. Yeah. Right. And then he reveals, yeah, I'm. I'm going to appreciate the most. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to launch this shit and then I'm going to dive down yeah. and then the world is going to just devolve into chaos and I'm going to merge later and pick up the pieces. Yep. So still wants to take over the world. So at that point, all of a sudden there is a surprise as a depth charge hits. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So the whole like, let's not engage, they they kind of turn that around really quickly. I was kind of laughing at this too. They're sending depth charges down when they're like, don't rock the boat too much because there's a nuclear sub and Mike's yeah. like, nah, let's just blast it now. Well, it's only Hawaii. Do you think their <laughs> thinking though is like, like better to blow up the boat where it is than let him launch anything. Yeah, yeah. He's a maniac. Totally. Yeah. 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 Well, just- and then what was there was that whole thing in like the end of the Cold War where we almost went into a nuclear war mm-hmm. because somebody thought a missile was launched in another country. Yes. I can't imagine the government being like, hey, Russia, that nuclear warhead that just hit your country, we didn't launch it. It came from your own sub. And they would be like, yeah, fuck you. And then they yeah. would start hitting <laughs> air buttons. Of course, yeah. yeah. But that charge essentially releases Storm and Wolverine. And then Storm gets a, a little bit more of her like, I'm going to shoot back. I'm going to fight down yeah. Omega Red again. We also learn something, like to your point, we learn more about nuclear missiles here than anywhere else in our life. <laughs> anywhere. That there is a, a essentially a warhead override where if it's set, they come out hot yes. as opposed to being activated as it gets closer to their target. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that's accurate. I kind of hope it is. I'm going with it for the rest of my life. Yeah. If, it, if, if one ever gets launched, it would be like, don't worry, baby. There's a, actually, there's a warhead a thing in there. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, the fallout starts. Yeah. Exactly. And she's like, you lied to me. <laughs> <laughs> Just here, hold me. Let me hold you close. But at that point, of course, the warheads do start launching. They pop out of the ship. Then there was a weird thing that I don't know. Again, we know fuck all about anything that's scientific or missiles at this point. But they all line up at the surface of the water and then shoot out yeah. all at the same time. I don't think that's how that works. I kind of don't think yeah. it is, but I also can't say for sure. Yeah, I don't think so. Because <laughs> like, they kept saying he's got to get to launching. He had to get to a certain depth to be able depth to launch. or whatever, right. Which was too. 200, which was an arbitrary yeah. 200 inches. Yeah. And then the missiles shoot out of the top of the thing. And they, uh, yeah, I'm yeah. pretty sure when you launch a missile, it's from underwater and it shoots it just up keeps out going. of the water. Yes. It doesn't like line up and then eject. Yeah. Cause they launch from the top of the sub. They got to the surface and then they waited. <laughs> and they waited. I like the idea that they always come up to the water and they always just like kind of convene. You're like, you're good. You're good. You good? Okay, Everyone good? Let's, All right, go. let's go. <laughs> Team all, missile. They all high five each other. Yeah. 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 It's like free. They're the bullets in Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Yeah. Like, Yee-haw! <laughs> I was going to destroy with, a city. I was going to go with the, the worst version of the Planeteers, but that's even better. <laughs> so first one pops up. That one gets shot out of the sky. Omega Red doesn't really know who did it. And neither does the army. Mm-hmm. And it's revealed that it was the Blackbird who is, you know, like stealth mode. <laughs> which was a great spot for them to be. Like that was actually yeah. the right call. Yeah. They shoot the two others and then four and five basically get away. Rogue is super confident in her targeting. And then she misses four and five. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, it um, happens. But at least the Navy and or Air Force or whatever is able to take out the remaining ones. So props to the military for not being completely incompetent. We also see, which I think was one of the animation errors of the episode, is the missile screen that we saw earlier had 15 missiles on it. When the five launched, the five are indicated. And then all of a sudden, there are only two missiles left on the screen and they both go black. And I'm like, I rewound it. I'm like, wait, did he launch 15 missiles and I just can't count? And that was not the case? No. Nope. <laughs> Yeah, the screens no. on this episode were hilarious to me too because even on the Blackbird with the depth charge screen, it was like it's like they like cut out like their rotoscope like Windows ninety eight. Yes, and like when in text they're like. Well, you said they were in a screen. rush making yeah. this one, so yeah. clearly they were like, "Come on, just, hurry up! We got to do this." Yeah, just a full fledged rotoscope at yeah. that point. And then we get Beast giving this. I've never been bored in the middle of a Beast quote, but he gives the longest thing <laughs> that I'm like, "What the fuck are you talking about?" It was some out of context experience. Yeah, quote, it, like. it felt like too much for him. I liked it. <laughs> did you? I did. I liked it. I, I was. I got as a sucker for it. I was like, "That's deep as shit." I, I do wow. appreciate. In, wow. In, in the book that we reference all the time, there is an entire chapter that is just all the beast quotes and references that's from other cool. stuff. Yeah. Let me see that book. Yeah, of course. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yep. I didn't know this even existed. There are two. I'll show you the other There's one. There's two. Yep. Oh, this is so cool. And this is just him talking about working on the show and stuff. Yep. Oh, I gotta and the other one has art assets in it. Yep. I got to get these books. This is previously on X Men. Pretty dope. So Omega Red realizes where he fucked up and he decides, all right, cool. I'm going to do the override now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They actually paid that off. And at that point, we get the scene that you were this referencing, the, Sean. The best scene in the whole show. Would you like to talk about that Beast scene since you enjoyed it so Rogue much? Gets, starts to like unbuckle, and Reese is like, no, no, you can't, you can't possibly. She's like, it's time, it's time for me to go. <laughs> I gotta go do this. And he's like, oh, you can't possibly do this. It's too far, you'll, you'll die. And then she like, Plops into the water, easily swims to the boat. And then <laughs> and then I was like, wow, okay. And then she like bends part of it. And I'm like, okay, she's gonna swim to the surface. And then she bends like 17 more yeah. parts yeah. of the boat with no struggle. None. Not any at all. And then when she eventually does like get back, she's like fine. They don't even do like a oh my god, I yeah. could barely breathe. Yep. She's completely fine. Yep. Um, and, and I love that her quote, she's like, I broke the boat. I broke yeah. the boat. <laughs> <laughs> well, she she rips a hole in one of the panels, which I don't know what that does, yeah. because I'd imagine there's some level of it could take impacts or hits that if one little panel gets messed up, that doesn't. OK, so here's what I learned recently from Ooh. watching reality television. <laughs> wait, wait, we have research. Yeah. So <laughs> how my, are you on this show, sir? Uh, Elizabeth and I watch this show called Below Deck on Bravo. That's about sailing. Uh, it's about yachts. It's okay. about really expensive yachts and like the crews and then the rich people that take the yachts out. Anyway, what I recently learned is they these we're talking like million dollar giant yachts right these huge boats well underneath these boats there are two i can only describe them as little flappy flaps yep. two little metal flappy flaps like the size of your hand maybe a little bit bigger if those don't work the entire boat goes up and like side to side insanely and it's just two little flaps yeah. so when she was like bending stuff on the outside of the boat i immediately was like oh yeah she's destroying this mm -hmm. submarine forever right because and then those two little yeah. things are the only and it made me never want to go on a boat again and then <laughs> and then she goes to the rudder which is the part that i actually yes. know because yes. that's the thing that's like steering and, yeah and she just totally fucks that thing up mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, but yeah, the, they're screwed. The, the flappy flaps are interesting. The flappy flaps. I mean, these are giant boats, and 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 it happened where like the boat started to go crazy on this episode, and the captain, when it was all over, the captain's like, yeah. So apparently, like there was like a power shortage, and these two things, and then they like cut under the boat, and they show you the things. She's like, they just stopped working for a minute, and it's like. <gasps> That's it? That's all it takes? Yeah, yeah, it's a boat. It's supposed to float. Yeah, physics is terrifying. <laughs> terrifying. <laughs> like, you think about being in a plane while it's up in the air, like, how, how no does thanks. physics work? Like, I, don't <laughs> think, I don't want to think about it. Nope. It's magic. Nope. Now I'm never going near a boat, let alone <laughs> on a boat. But the, the attack from Rogue destroying the outer wall, Dang. whatever. whatever. Hull. We, hull. The hull. Hull. That's we the should word. also say, like, I couldn't remember why my whole life I loved Rogue so much. And like, it's this show. They make, she's the coolest person on this whole by show far. by yeah. far. She says cool stuff. Even like Wolverine, like they try, he's like, you know, snarky, anti-hero cool. But man, even just in this episode, she's so overpowered, but in yeah. a cool way. No. And she like does badass stuff. And then she makes like hilarious jokes afterwards. She's great. And you love yeah. her too, because she's so, super cute. And I will just share this. Met the voice actress at San Diego Comic-Con. Nice. And props to her for being the ballsiest of any of the people that I met at the show. Anybody was like $20 for an autograph. And if you, brought an, if you bought an item off the table, they would just sign everything. She was 
$30 for an autograph and then $30 for a selfie. She's like, I'm the yeah, fucking badass yeah, yeah. and I can charge this. Yeah. yeah. So I totally respect it. There's no it. shade whatsoever on nope. it. She's like, you want me? Pay yeah. for it. <laughs> I met the voice of Space Ghost once at a convention and nice. he had a little sign that says that said $50 for outgoing voicemails. And I was oh. like, that honestly yeah. is a steal. Yeah. And for years, my outgoing message was Space Ghost being That's like, amazing. oh, hello, what is this? What's going on? You've called who? Sean? I don't know. Anyway, you know, it was That's great. Amazing. So he, worth it. He was he was cameo before cameo. Yeah. George Lowe, great guy. Love that. Piece. <laughs> when that distraction takes place, Storm, again, showing how much of a badass she is, carries Wolverine up the ladder, they surface and they reveal to Rogue and Beast that, oh, the ship is listing. I didn't know what listing meant. I had to figure that one out. But essentially yeah. it was the ship is rolling side to side. Yeah. yeah. So it's still sitting there. And they're like, is he still alive? Who cares? We're going to go home. And they do not yeah. check to make sure that. Well, it starts going sinking and sinking to not like the yet. It's, oh, yeah, it's, it, it, it's it, they have the scene where they're like, fuck this, we're going home. And then the navigation failure happens where it sinks further. Mm. It, it's also a little bit confusing because the submarine has already fallen off the ledge when they initially started it, like right. back in the episode. And now it's back on a le so it went different ledge. So different ledge, different ledge and stuff. And so I, it's like it's, it just keeps, I think yeah. it's surface to launch. Yeah. By sitting on another ledge, yeah. and yeah, it's, right, and then yeah. it falls, yeah. and it falls. I mean, that's yeah. why they're like, it's falling. Yeah, well, it's fucked. He's not getting out of here. No. I, so I was watching like the timer for the episode. I was like, there's a minute and a half left. There's, yeah, there's not, they're not wrapping this up. And no, that is the wrap still, up. The wrap up is alive. Like, yeah. No? <laughs> well, so I have a question: does does he come back, or? Is the first appearance going to be an inevitable X-97 so, appearance? According to the Wikipedia, yes. and again, we have not redone our rewatch of any episodes past this one. That's this what we a, did with the nanny. I don't have yeah. no idea. I vaguely remember as a child, and then yeah. whatever we see, we but see. But this is the last one where it's listed. Interesting. That said, there are episodes that went out of order. Mm. Okay. So I don't know if there's like a Weapon X, like, team episode where he's he just appears. back <laughs> yeah or it's or it's like a flashback to him and sure yeah but, interesting yeah Ooh, but, this is, but this, is, this is the last one so absolutely could be a scenario where okay, he comes well, back for 97 if there's, if there's a omega red x-men 97 episode i've got dibs okay you will probably need to be able to turn that around and join us like on an audio recording like the next night because yeah, let's our, do it. our whole schedule is gonna get fucked <laughs> yeah, up let's when do that it. Live. <laughs> yeah. no why don't we why don't i come over when it comes out and we'll watch it and record. i don't think he's coming over for those that's why oh but if you want to record with me and we remotely dial into rod that could work I, I yeah I, I, i'm just down figure, like while it's happening live like we just like do it like you want to try time. to get him as quickly like, as possible yeah. Yeah. like i'm down i'm couple, totally couple day turnaround totally probably. down or you can dial me in and no. I'll, I'll show you guys yeah. the two things we use and, and we could just do that i'll do it like that night with you yeah i'll be watching them the night they come out so at that point it starts diving deeper into the trench at the mansion wolverine just doesn't believe that omega red <laughs> is is dead and he's yeah. still out there and then we see the go-to for this show of something is dangerous and still alive and it's the red eyes yeah, yeah. the light up and mr also sinister yeah got one of those in an episode there I'm was sure. like the shadow king one the shadow yeah. king the the thing maybe the brood in the brood well, we episode <laughs> no nah, the brood didn't didn't have light up eyes but the shiar ship at the start of the phoenix saga right. and those were yellow eyes yes and also the trope that the x-men just let everyone go well they're not murderers <laughs> maybe they should be no, no but listen. nobody established in the first season that they are because storm had dropped <laughs> buildings on people yes yeah, she literally <laughs> dropped a building on the juggernaut and, but all, and we didn't we didn't like clarify that the building was empty yeah or, like, <laughs> or or the episode where you find out the orphanage that scott used to chill at he wants to show his power off to the mutant kid rusty and he literally just is like looks around does a double check and shoots an abandoned building and i'm like <laughs> if this is a poor shitty area there are probably squatters in that building he yeah. just destroyed so so they're murderers but they don't murder the bad guys <laughs> yeah there was a bit there's been a couple they're episodes. just negligent yes <laughs> yeah. gross gross yeah gross so, negligence yeah, it's not homicide it's manslaughter Man, it's manslaughter <laughs> yeah it's it's, it's uh, manslaughter well that wraps up the episode itself is there anything that we didn't cover that you guys want to hit on this one i mean it was to your point it was kind of like this weird bottle episode and we know why because it was like oh this yeah. was this was written in a weekend yeah but it's actually like 
still better than some of the other episodes of this like part of the season too yeah it, so. i really enjoyed it and i mean i i sat there watching it with my fiance who's never seen an episode of this show before and she was like that was cool like that was fun yeah. you yeah, know the dialogue makes sense for it, yeah parts, totally so. and, and you know it's fun i feel like in the episodes like this where it's more about the plot than the character moments for the x-men you end up having some of the cooler villains like mm -hmm. the mojo episode is so like wacky and and weird and yeah. stuff like that there's no growth of any characters in the episode but mojo ended up becoming such a popular character from the first episode they had to bring him back in a later <clears throat> well, season because they're just interesting and different i feel like batman the animated series really set off this 90s trend in in animation you know in superhero animation where rediscovering minor like reinventions of villains became really exciting for right. both fans and writers you know because they did such a paul, paul dini did such a good job with like mr freeze and i mean everyone everyone got redesigned on that show and was like a slightly different origin than the comics but still honored the comics and this show does something similar the 90s spider-man did that and honestly it was what was my favorite part and what was disappointing and i think the ultimate failure of shows like silver surfer fantastic four incredible hulk at the time all of these shows were things that i remember being very excited about at the time and then immediately losing interest in when i realized like oh they don't have really great rogues and they're not really we saw like three leader episodes in a row mm -hmm. and it's like this is kind of boring i'm i i'm kind of in it for the reinvention of the rogues a little bit yep. more than i am for just like seeing a hulk punch someone week to week yeah i mean even in the spider-man show like the fact that they reverse the order of the goblins like the the yeah. hobgoblin was the initial villain yeah. and then the green goblin was a variation of him yeah. whereas in the comics it was literally the guy who would become the hobgoblin found a storage unit of green goblin shit and then yeah. turned it yeah. into his own thing and they started to branch out even in the spider-man cartoon to like you know you get your punisher episode and your daredevil episode and they start to like build that universe and then the hulk show was so insular Fantastic Four was a little bit better, but not, to be honest, not other than the crossover in the Secret Wars episode yeah. where the Fantastic Four appeared in Spider Man, yeah. I don't think I ever watched an episode of that Fantastic Four <laughs> it's show. It's not the worst. It's on, I think that's on Disney Plus. Yeah, probably. Yeah, um, it's on Disney Plus. I haven't, it's not the worst. I haven't watched Hulk or Fantastic Four, but over the lockdown, I did watch Silver Surfer and I was actually into it because he had like Galactus and stuff. Yeah. But the show doesn't fucking end. Yeah. It got canceled. It just like it just stops. Stops. Yeah. yeah. That's the most frustrating. Yeah, part. Surfer's not terrible. Till it doesn't end. Till, I mean, till like it's, if I had known that, canceled. I wouldn't have started it. Yeah. <laughs> It's yeah. Unresolved. Oh yeah. It's 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 yeah. like oh, do you like wrestling? Watch Glow. Oh God, you're not going to get resolution to the yeah. show. Thanks Netflix. We just did that. We just did that on Peacock with a show called Shrink that we got super into, and we finished the first season, and we thought it was like a Peacock original. And I'm like, what is this show? And it was like a CISO show that got canceled when CISO Aww. got canceled, like in like 2014 or whatever. Yeah. And I was like, oh, we're never getting another season of. Oh this. yeah. I ma I made that mistake with Mindhunter on Netflix, where it was like, oh. oh the origin of how serial killers are dealt with by the fbi and i started watching it after it had already been canceled oh, and i didn't know because i was like you know you, you throw it on and you watch it for a few minutes and it's like all right cool i'll get into this and then it's like end of season two and i'm like when does season three come out it's not to be fair every year david fincher is asked about it and every year he's like maybe eventually yeah, yeah. so did yep. you guys ever watch the black donnelly's no so it's kind of like a sopranos mafia thing but mm -hmm. it's with the irish family i think okay and it's based on a real like urban legend and like the the or the real story you don't know how much is true or whatever but the crux of it is it the the story is legendary because supposedly it ends with the entire family lineage getting gunned down in an alley wow because of the black Don donnelly's so the end of the first season, I watched this in real time when it was coming out. I was like, oh, this is a really interesting story. And the end of the first season has the whole family that currently in an alley and they're held at gunpoint and then it screen goes black and they're like, come back season two. And they never got, Aww. and I was like, I was like, go back in the studio for one day, show it. <laughs> Finish the show. Finish the show. So it, it involuntarily just ended like the Sopranos. Yeah. I, yes, I Where you're like, you left to like, maybe they get out of it somehow. Maybe the police show up or they get murdered in that alley. Yeah. We'll never know. Uh, we just need that like next 10 minutes. You just, <laughs> want, you just want to see them get gunned down. Yeah, you, or, or, or the other. Or not. Just, yeah. Right. So something. Sean, yeah. thank you so much for joining us. Yeah. This has been a pleasure to have yeah. you. Oh, Remind fun. people where to find Oh stuff. yeah. You can check out Oh Mr. Sheffield, a podcast about the nanny. It's a fantastic uh, name. Yeah. Just look for old. That's how we found most of our traffic is 
is coming from Google, people searching that phrase. So, but oh, Mr. Sheffield, you can also just search my name in comics and you'll see a bunch of comics. Galaxies for Hires is the most recent book. Oh, I also did the Trailer Park Boys comic that just recently oh, nice. came out. I did it, it's an anthology. So there's a bunch of people, but I did, I wrote and edited that whole book and then did uh, lettered some stories in there and stuff. And yeah, I don't know, I'm around. Sean writes on Twitter if you yep. want to talk to yeah, me. Yeah, we'll throw all the links into sure. our descriptions and all that stuff. And then to you guys, the audience, thank you all for joining us. And if you have thoughts, make sure to drop them into the comments for either the YouTube upload or the official Instagram post about this episode. And if you like what you heard, we would appreciate a rating on the podcast episode, podcast app of your choosing. Those are words. You can find us on Apple Podcasts, Anchor, Spotify, Google Podcasts, and Rod's favorite, CastBox. Yeah, I got nothing. Cool. Bye, guys. Cool.